Jul på Vesterbro, Westbridge Christmas, episode 23, julefred, peace at Christmas time, thoughts. So, spoilers of these first 23 episodes, another episode I love, though I will criticize the offensive elements of it, and let's dive right in. So, yeah, um, Randy says, you can't kill us. I have plans, you know, I, I have something I have to do Thursday. And she says some really racist stuff. And yeah, Stuart hits her for the first of three times this episode because someone writing this really hates perhaps not all women, but at least some women. A lot. And yeah, Anna shows up. I do like that, you know, he sees this hold up and he's like, You guys can't sleep either? He's such a sweetheart. And yeah, um, he sings and yeah, this episode has what is probably the element I find the most objectionable in the entire show. The idea that Anna singing a Christmas song makes the Muslims, you know, they're, they're like tearing up and like, <clears throat> yeah, seemingly like just giving up on terrorism, you know, they're, they're, you know, making amends with, with Stuart and just, yeah. I think it would be fine if it was both the Christian Danes and the Muslim immigrants giving up something, you know, you could have... There could be, like, let's see. Yeah, yeah, the, the you know, let's see, because it's, you can't really fit a montage in there. Uh, let's see, yes, yes. What you could have is that Stuart picks up some, you know, yeah, yeah. Stuart picks up some, some Christian bit of, of decoration, uh, you know, and Kifia picks up, you know, a, a Muslim, you know, yeah, something from the Muslim culture, uh, you know, uh, a prayer rug, maybe one of those banners with, with tag, you know, yeah, something like that, and they hand each other the, the thing so that, yeah, you know, let's see, and... Yeah, it, I don't think it would be enough if it was food. You know, I, I do realize the lyrics include hummus and shawarma. It's easy enough to take in the food, but no, in this episode, in the show, the Muslims have to surrender their culture to Christian Danes. Christmas is not a positive thing for devout Muslims, especially in the West where they're bullied because of it. And this episode shows forced assimilation instead of the culture's mixing. To be clear, I am in favor of showing Muslims as capable of love and emotional vulnerability as they are in real life. And, and you know, that is what we see here. It's the fact that the show suggests that in order to achieve that they have to give up their culture. That is my problem. And let's see... Um, right, so, oh, right, that's, yeah, um, just gonna make sure to, um, yeah, uh, let's see, so, that, and there we go. Okay. Um, I think that yeah, those were those were my notes that I took before watching it from memory. And let's yeah. Also in the song, Anna uses the the Danish equivalent of the F slur, which is like really out of character for for him. And it's weird because. Literally, you could have any other character on the show say that, and it would feel in character. But, like, he's, you know, comfortable around ex-cons, 
and, you know, violent. Like, he comes back even after Stuart hit him in the face. So that's okay, but he doesn't like gay... Like, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I'm not sure he said at any other time that he is okay with gay people, but yeah, it just feels... Anyway, and then we have... Um, oh, right, right, yeah. Uh, Stuart finally gets... Kefia's name right, and, you know, it starts out as, oh, that's, that's, you know, kind of a nice moment, but then, you know, Stuart says, I'm sorry, that's your real name, you know, which, is, yeah, and, and it's also, like, I don't think I always realized, when I, when I was watching this as a teenager, I didn't realize, like, I suppose Kefia, which is indeed, you know, that is an actual, I want to say it's like a dairy product. Yeah, d dairy product here in, here in Denmark. I suppose that sounds somewhat like it It could also be the name of, you know, a, a Muslim. But most of the other things he says are dairy products that don't sound remotely like the, the like they could be Muslim names. So, just, yeah. And... Yeah, I, I do like, you know, yeah, um, Stuart, you know, to, to Danny's, come here, you know, big, big hug, daddy's boy, and, and he, you know, he wants to say something nice back, so he says, boys, daddy, because <laughs> that's, yeah, you do, how do you reverse that one to make it sound like you also appreciate your, your father, you know, that's, yeah, and... And Randy, literally the only, everyone is trying to, to be sweet. The, the, still the only Muslim to get a, a line is, is Kefia. The others legitimately are just background dressing. But every major character who's, you know, present and still alive gets to, to say something to, you know, yeah, to make up with someone that they've been hostile towards. But when Randy does it, because people consider her like annoying, they think she talks too much, we're supposed to laugh when Stuart hits her. You know, instead like it's already a misogynistic stereotype. It's the thing, oh, you know, women talk so much. Well, traditionally they haven't you know, for, for a long time they weren't allowed they weren't allowed to work. They weren't allowed to, like they weren't actually allowed to leave the home. Like, other than doing housework, you know, yeah, t like taking care of plants and talking and, and you know, focusing on the, the, the way they look and the, the house looks and such. These are the things that they were actually allowed to do by the patriarchy. And then, you know, a bunch of patriarchal men turn around and say, ah, oh, look at the, these terrible things that, and, and, then they're all obsessed about how, ah, oh, you know, men definitely shouldn't care about how we look. And, you know, if you if you like flowers, that means you're like a woman. Just, yeah. Let's see. And, you know, and, and also, like, even if you think, oh, you know, she's she's being annoying, hitting her is, is completely ridiculous, you know, completely disproportionate. And yeah, we we realize that the you know Kefir's wife, you know the the, yeah, the person we thought was Kefir's wife is actually a Mossad agent. I think um, Ibrahim was was the name that that he gave. You know, and I will say they they did a really great job on the prosthetics. As far as I know, that is still actually Honest Madison, but for the longest time I just couldn't really see that that was was him because they yeah the prosthetics really do a great job there and yeah they make some jokes about ah oh, you know Kefir is married to a guy and just yeah and yeah and I, I do appreciate the the there's at least a little bit of cultural awareness you know Ibrahim 
turns down pork, same as the Muslims did, but he says, is it kosher? Which is not something a Muslim would say, but it is something that a you know conservative Jewish person would say. And you know, if you're pursuing a job in, as like a spy, you're probably conservative. And let's see. Yeah, he's he's shot, and we see that Greta literally is a a neo-Nazi. She wasn't just saying neo-Nazi you know viewpoints she actually is one she has the the uniform and and the the gun and everything and i i know just enough about guns to know that is actually that is the kind of gun a german an, an yeah a nazi officer would be using in world war 2 and yeah it is possible to still get your hands on one and find one that actually works you know there's some like old stuff like if you get like a a bomb from back then it might not work in unless it's been like yeah taken apart and and you know made to to properly work again and <laughs> because it's the you know obviously this is the last episode that's going to have the speaker so they make sure to have yeah he's he gets mad and storms off because you know next episode is not going to need a speaker the speaker is there to get you into watching the next episode next episode is the last episode and yeah you know they've been building towards this he he gets very annoyed when he gets interrupted it's also easy to see from Stuart's point of view because it's it's like you really think people are going to watch 23 episodes but not the 24th you know it's and and the you know the speaker's like it's it's called a cliffhanger, you know, he's, he's like, I'm trying to do my job here, you asshole, you know, just, yeah, and the, the, yeah, so he, you know, he walks off, and Stuart's like, but, come, come back, not in a million years, but the questions, here, you can read your own, you can read your crap, you know, he throws it, and that is the most aerodynamic that I have ever seen, like, I get that it wouldn't quite have the same effect if it was passed hand to hand, but like, have you ever actually tried? Because there's like a bunch of you know individual you know pieces of paper. It's not just like oh okay. For a second, I thought there was a problem with the the stream itself. No, it's just a an annoying pop up. Anyway, yeah. Oh my. You know, if I didn't need that antivirus program, I would uninstall it for all these freaking pop-ups. But the stream is still going, so, yes. Um, but yeah, you know, somehow it, it sails through the air very nicely. And, um, let's see. Then we have, yeah, and, and Danny is... is you know, going to read them, and they make a joke out of the fact that he can't read, which, you know, that really hasn't aged well. Today we're more, much more sensitive to the fact that, you know, that doesn't, because we're supposed to think, oh, he's, like, stupid, he's, you know, how, how ridiculous is it that he can't read, but, like, that's, you know, dyslexia does not mean that, you know, there's, like, there's people who have like college education despite the fact that they you know they they struggle with dyslexia so so yeah um i i do with that said i do find it kind of funny that he he gets the family's name wrong like one of the things he's reading is family stardust he knows that word you know is this is like when kelly bundy said Chicago, even though she's lived in Chicago, you know, what, what is she at that point, like 16, 17, you know, she's lived there her whole life, 16, 17 years, she still doesn't know how to, to read, you know, so, yeah, and Randy is hit just one more time, and for absolutely no reason, like, she literally, she's doing the thing that is supposed to, to, you know, and it's actually, like, it starts, like, it's, it's kind of funny that Danny is struggling. Like, we all know, you know, yeah, the, the last 
a couple of words, you know, tune in tomorrow, and he's really struggling with that, and then she comes in and, and says it, but then they also have her, her hit, and again, like, we're encouraged to laugh at it, you know, I'm, if, if you're going to show something like that, it should be, you know, oh, this, you know, this is someone who really, you know, this is completely out of bounds, and, and it's not impossible for Danish you know, I, I want to say, let's see, um, yeah, the, the Danish movie Bleeder from 1999, so it came out four years before this advent calendar, there's also a, a bit where a man is, is violent with a woman, and it's actually, like, the movie is critical of that, the movie is saying this is completely unacceptable behavior. And, yeah, that is it. So, yeah, tune in tomorrow.